The production design of this film was a monumental, monumental thing to put in somebody's lap. We ended up putting it in um, the lap of Sarah Rose Rays, who's our production designer, and then also her partner in crime was Chelsea Motherwell, who is our art department coordinator. And together, the two of them rocked it so hard, um, just blew it out of the water. I've always wanted to work closely with Joe, um, just because I really think that he's done some incredible work with like Park Bench and um, just other stuff that I've seen from him. And I enjoy his style and his aesthetic. Madman was definitely a, a huge thing that he was like, draw from that for makeup and for costume and for just the feel and the look of it. But it was definitely a challenge because he pushed me and my team like to the limit. Well, I think the best thing about it was the fact that every time I looked at the monitor, I was never disappointed. Hi, I'm Angie. I'm the costume designer for Miracle of the Murderers. It's a lot of collaborating with a lot of different people, with props, with uh, set design, with a director, and and, um, and staying in budget, which uh, can be a little bit tricky, but luckily uh, I was able to get most of the stuff from the costume shop on campus. I researched everything about the 50s. I read magazines, I read articles, I looked at every single picture that Google came up with on Google Images. I got a few words from Joe before I went out searching and just for different characters in the script. So like Sweeney was the colorful, obnoxious character, the one that um, kind of just speaks his mind. And Hume was the shrewd, understated psychiatrist, the classic guy. We've got Davis, who was the aristocratic kind of one, the one who everybody has a respect for, which Charlie Terry is the perfect character for. What I did was capture the personality of the actor as well as the character and Joe's vision. I didn't want to have a different vision than what he had for this because this is really his masterpiece that he created and I was just able to help. Here we are day five on the street scene in downtown Suffolk set dressing. Um, we got a new stand here that was built by a PD member. We got lots of campaign signs and even a movie poster featuring our own director and his wife and other keys in the bottom. So we're really excited for today. We got cars around and it's looking awesome. We're here at the impressive St. Francis School in Powhatan, Virginia. And uh, I gotta say, this is an amazing location. If possible, even I don't want to. See, I only want to come up when we're behind her. So move over in the note. Yeah, make it basically. We're looking at Philip, and then we're looking at Justin. So the nurse is just kind of like a road to get there. By far, my favorite experience was Lauren coming up to me and saying, "So you, did you see that group of like ladies that came in with Sister Jean? Like she was kind of giving them a tour and stuff." And I was like, "I saw them, but you know, like what what were they doing here and stuff of like that?" And this was during the the fluoroscope room. Whenever I work on a, on, a, on a set or whenever I work on a particular room for set dressing or whatever, stuff like that, there's rooms that I really look forward to them and there's the, those rooms that I'm like, ah, it's, I don't know how it's gonna come together. Like, I just don't, I don't know. So that was one of those rooms where I was like, oh, man, man, this probably isn't gonna be my favorite. And we like had the fluoroscope in there. We had the patient chair. We had the table in the back with like the odds and ends and stuff like that. We had the curtains that were made and, uh, I liked how it came out. Lauren came up to me and said, oh yeah, one of those ladies came up and she was like astounded. And she just she just said that she was a nurse in the 1950s and she couldn't believe how legit it looked. <laughs> and I was just like stunned. One of the biggest challenges is making sure that it's authentic and that it looks realistic. And here's somebody that's, you know, validating it. And it was just confirmation that, you know, like all our hard work was, you know, not for nothing. There was um, several trips taken to Powhatan just for this room. Um, we had to paint in the dark. There was no electricity um, whatsoever. Headlamps. Headlamps and flashlights. According yes. to Sister Jean, it's the first time that she's seen it lit up like this in 43 years. Um, we, this back wall right here was just beyond, beyond being saved. There was no way to paint it because of all the paint peeling off. So we decided to buy fabric. Um, 
obviously yeah, filling it with just um, everything we got was either donated we found from the prop shop um, honestly just came from everywhere and tearing this down is going to be a pain in the butt I kind of just want to leave it and let people think that this place is still running because it's beautiful and it looks like it's running it's been a lot of fun this place I was one of the places I was most worried about you know but people pulled through like, people gave us mason jars which was so nice Adrian Garcia Adam Sandin and Kelly Emery were the ones that made all the jar like um, labels and some of that and it really just come together our entire PD uh, team helped with us today because um, yesterday me and Nicolette finished painting but when we got here today there was there was nothing it was all done um, it was all done this morning and today it was all hands on deck and I am completely um, amazed with what with what we pulled off sister Jean came in there because she saw she knew what it was beforehand like when she came in and saw that pantry she just her face lit up and she was just like oh my gosh this is amazing and I, I was so stoked to show her that pantry because I mean it, it was dark in there like you could not really see what it was or what it was becoming until um, the lights went up in there and we were actually about to shoot so it was I don't know it was amazing <laughs>